How are your drinks, everyone? Refresh. <laughs> I, I, do you know what? Do I we swear. Need a little more? If you're, if you're okay. gonna add it, at if least be adding. generous. Right, all right, all right. All right, so now, now we can handle shark knife. What, what we're, we're going to do is we're going to show some of the prep involved in a wild mushroom risotto with bacon wrapped mm -hmm. seared scallops. We have a couple port portobellas. Okay. We have some of my favorite shiitake mushrooms. Okay. And then we also have some regular button mushrooms. That so we're going to have you start on these. All right. What you're going to do, you just want to kind of break off the cap of these. Mm -hmm. We're going to put it right here in our little bucket. And then we're going to just thinly Slice our mushrooms. Watch closely, Cynthia. Okay, that's not thin. <laughs> While you're doing that, we're actually gonna step over here and get into some of the bacon wrap Oh, scouts. you're leaving yes. me. You can do it. So there's our bacon. We're actually gonna cut it right here. Just right. wanna cut it right down the line. And we're actually gonna take a piece of bacon. And now you do not wanna discard the, the bottom piece of the fat of the bacon. We'll actually render the fat out and use it to saute the scallops in. Oh, delicious. Yeah, fat is flavor. <laughs> fat is bacon flavor. Bacon is good. And then you take your scalp, just like that. Uh huh. You take your toothpick, oh, and you're gonna score yummy. right through the middle. And then what you're gonna want to do with the mushrooms is actually you're gonna want to sweat them out in a little bit of butter. Uh -huh. Sweat them mm -hmm. off for about 30 <laughs> minutes on very low yeah. heat. Why do you call it sweating? Actually, what they do is when you're cooking them, it releases all the juices inside the mushroom as well as then it actually sucks them back up. Okay. So you're actually sweating out the sweating out of the, the moisture, mushroom. right? And we will saute these when we cook them. Yes. And when you're actually doing the risotto, we'll actually have awesome. very small diced onions and you'll actually start to sweat those out, and when those actually start to become translucent, you add a little bit of white wine, and let that almost where it looks dry. It's called a sec. And then you'll add in your risotto. Once your risotto is into that mixture, it'll start to pop. Add in some chicken stock, which you'll see in a little bit, and you'll actually let that cook out. And at the very end is when you want to mix in your mushrooms into your risotto. You make it sound so easy. It's very easy. All is the dishes it? you're gonna do today are very, very simple. Okay, right now is where we left off. We have our mushrooms sweating right here. Mm -hmm. They've been sweat. sweating for about 20 minutes. So this is what you're looking for right here. They're nice and they got a little bit of color on them, all the flavors Smells out. Great. So we're gonna leave those on a very low heat, as low as you can go. Mm -hmm. okay. Here we have our risotto. It's just about done. We went ahead and sweated out our onions, added a little white wine. We put in roughly about a cup of risotto. And for every cup of risotto, you're gonna add two cups of stock. Or if it's a half cup of risotto, you want one cup of stock. And risotto is like a an Italian rice. Exactly. Okay. And so what, what we're gonna do what is what are you gonna be doing here? Right here, we actually have some drawn butter that's uh -huh. in a nice hot pan. Uh -huh. And after we taste the risotto to yeah. see where it's at, we're gonna go ahead and add our prawns. And with our prawns, we did salt, pepper, and paprika. Excellent. Mm. So if yeah. everyone wants to take, it's gonna be very hot. Take a little bit of taste to see how okay. done our risotto is. All right. And the risotto has just a little bit of firmness, so it's just al dente. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it's about the time we want to go ahead and add in our mushrooms. Mm. So you just in add the mind. mushrooms in, go ahead and stir them up. Be very gentle with the risotto though. You don't want to mash it up or else it will taste like and look like oatmeal. So we're going to go ahead and leave that on the smallest heat we can get. Okay. So we have nice and hot fire here. Okay. We're just going to drop in the prawns. We can fit all of them right into that skillet. And just so y'all know, right here, we actually have a steamer set up. And what's in here, we actually put our fingerling potatoes. And they'll be in the steamer for roughly, probably about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, if you wanna check the doneness, just get a fork and it'll slide right through. So, so ladies, just, by all means, uh, <laughs> drop them right in. All right, here we go. Dirty those, uh, dirty those gloves. Dirty those oh, gloves with oh, raw meat. Did I right. put it the wrong way? Nope, we're good. Oh, it's upside down. Oh no! And when doing the, her, the prawns, make sure you devein them as well as you shell them. Um, for this purpose, presentation, we left the tails on them. Alright, let's see. Just slowly just turn those, let them color, and they'll turn pink, and you'll actually see in the middle of the prawns, there will be a, a solid white. That's and good. we're actually going to use this actually as a garnish for our salad. Yep, it takes about three to four minutes and they'll be completely done. Do you have to do it on one side or flip it? We're gonna flip it. Okay. And also for the salad, I do like to refrigerate them. Since the salad is cold, I like to keep my prawns cold. Okay. So right about now, we'll go ahead and flip them. And you can see the nice golden brown color. Ooh, do you hear the sizzle? It smells And then on the other sizzle. side, we're gonna let them finish cooking all the way through. You usually want a little more color than this. Okay. Watch out for the popping as you can probably see. And now that we got a nice heat in the pan, we're gonna go ahead and turn down that fire to a medium low. Like I said, you're gonna leave those on for about three or four minutes and then we'll pull them off and finish the plating of the salad. So we're back in the kitchen. Okay. Well, and what are we doing? We have finished the prawns. We got those chilling in the refrigerator. Our risotto's just on a little bit of very low heat still. 
This right here is actually the bacon scrappings that's been rendered. So this is actually nothing but bacon fat, which is all flavor. Yeah. And what we're gonna do now is we've got that it's nice and going. Um, our steam tray is still going as well. We've seasoned our scallops with salt and pepper. And we're gonna go ahead and drop those in. Now, if your scallops seem like they're stuck on the skillet, don't worry, they'll release once they start cooking. So if really? you all wanna drop those in. I do, okay. I do, go I ahead. do, I do. I'm gonna just take over, sorry. And just remember, as you're dropping them in, you are gonna lose some heat. So if you don't hear the sizzle by the time you're at the end, it's just because some of your heat has left the pan because you've gotten so much in there. So awesome. what we're gonna do here, as we can see, these are gonna get some nice golden color. You want a nice color on the outside. Be very careful when you open the steam table. It's gonna have crazy steam. You can just sit here, take this out of the way, and poke them. As you can see, it's not really going through. They still probably need about another 15 minutes or so. How long before the uh, The scallops the are going to let rest of, on the heat like that for about three or four minutes. You want that color, that side, to pick up all the color. Okay. Then the next side, when you flip them, it's going to be probably about half amount of time. And then you're going to pull them off and put it right on top of the risotto. A lot of people think that sauteing is actually giving it flavor or locking in the flavor. All the sauteing does is actually give it color and give it texture. Yeah. Yeah. Looks delicious. All right, now on to the main course. Our yes. potatoes have about seven minutes left, so what we're actually gonna do is add our asparagus into the steam table. And then actually what we're gonna do with everything, um, just like potatoes, we're actually gonna saute these with a little bit of garlic and butter right before we serve them. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and throw them right into the steam table. And what we have here is a nice hot pan of oil. It's a canola oil, it's an 80-20 blend with extra virgin olive oil. Okay. And we have our filet mignon. With oh. just all we do here is it's such a nice cut of meat. We're just gonna do a little salt and pepper and go ahead and go right into the pan. Oh. And why why hot pan and why sear it? Well, we don't want the meat to actually soak up any grease. So what we're gonna do is a nice hot pan is gonna give it color as well as a little bit of crunch on the outside. Mm -hmm. Where all we're gonna do here is sear both sides and then we're actually gonna put it on a cooking sheet and throw it right into the oven at 350 for about 10 minutes. And then once it's done, it takes about 10 minutes in the oven to come out a nice medium rare. And then we'll go ahead and serve it. And that will be our Yay. entree. So as soon as you put these in the oven, you usually want to get your salad, start serving your salad. And by the time you get your next course done, which is your risotto and your bacon wrapped scallops, you go ahead and your steaks will be nice and ready. Absolutely. But now remember, once your steaks are done cooking, give them about five to 10 minutes to rest because if you don't let them rest, when you cut them open, everything will come right out. When you cook, oh. when you cook your steak, all the juices concentrate in the middle. And so you need to let them rest to let the juices expand throughout the whole steak. But what, what guarantees that the steak doesn't get too cold? You'll never, if you notice, you ever go to a really nice restaurant, your steak will never be steaming, piping hot. Sure. And that's just because if I give you a steak right out of the oven, it'll be hot, it's gonna be cooked right. As soon as you cut it open, you're gonna have all the juices all over your plate and the rest of your steak's gonna have no flavor. So that's why you wanna prevent. Okay. Is it still cooking a little bit? Maybe? It is. Okay. It's called carryover cooking. So if you want your steak medium rare, which is about 130, you want to pull it out about 120, 125, and then within the 10 minutes, it's still going to continue cooking as it rests. Okay. So just because the outside may be cold, the middle is still going to be cooking. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice yeah. they're still stuck, and you'll see this just like with the scallops. If they're still stuck, give them a little bit more time. They'll actually cook themselves loose, and that's when you know the color is going to be right. So you got some nice color. Beautiful. You're gonna do the same color on the outside and right into the oven at 350 on a little parchment paper and a cookie sheet. Love it. Now that we're out of uh, cocktails, let's go get some wine and get ready for dinner. That sounds good. And there it is.